Hook operators refers to a group of humanoid entities or individuals who possess extraordinary abilities to manipulate reality and control the majority of the human population. These beings are said to be physically indistinguishable from ordinary humans, but possess advanced psychic or technological capabilities that allow them to hook into the fabric of reality and alter it in subtle ways. Hook operators allegedly form a separate, hidden society focused on extracting pain and suffering from non-psychic humans, whom they refer to as things, while also influencing events, people, and even physical laws. The concept emerged from Barbara O'Brien's 1957 book, Operators and Things, but has since evolved to incorporate ideas about quantum manipulation and esoteric knowledge. Proponents of this theory claim that hook operators can be found in various fields, including government agencies, corporations, and secret societies. Some argue that the idea of hook operators aligns with other conspiracy theories about hidden groups controlling humanity, such as the concept of reptilians or men in black. The detailed nature of O'Brien's account, including specific rules and procedures within the operator society, has led some to question whether it could be entirely fabricated or if it offers a glimpse into a real parallel human species. Supporters of the hook operator theory often draw parallels between the described extraction of human suffering and other concepts in paranormal lore, such as energy vampires or demonic entities feeding on negative emotions. The theory is often linked to reports of seemingly impossible coincidences, unexplained phenomena, or sudden shifts in global events, which are attributed to the reality-altering effects of hook operators. Some speculate that historical figures who demonstrated unusual abilities or insights might have been examples of hook operators, suggesting their presence throughout human history. I've got one that can see. The Hooten Plan refers to a controversial proposal by American anthropologist Ernest Hooten in 1943 to prevent future German aggression through biological re-engineering. Hooten suggested mass sterilization of SS members, redistribution of the German population across Europe, and encouragement of mass immigration to Germany. The plan aimed to dilute the German racial stock over several generations, based on the now discredited belief that certain racial traits were linked to militaristic tendencies. Critics denounced the plan as a form of genocide and a violation of human rights, arguing against punishing an entire population for the actions of its leaders. While there's little evidence of official adoption, some speculate that post-war demographic shifts in Germany resembled aspects of Hooten's proposals. The scientific community largely rejected Hooten's underlying premise, emphasizing the importance of cultural, political, and environmental factors in shaping behavior. Post-war allied policies in Germany focused more on political, economic, and educational reforms rather than the biological interventions suggested by Hooten. The Hopi Blue Star Prophecy refers to a Native American prediction about the end of the current world cycle and the beginning of a new era. This prophecy speaks of a celestial being called the Blue Star Katsina, whose arrival on Earth will signal the start of major global changes. According to the prophecy, the Blue Star Katsina has a twin, the Red Star Katsina, whose later appearance will bring about widespread destruction. The Hopi believe they will survive this apocalyptic event in underground refugees, emerging later to repopulate the Earth. This prophecy is part of a larger Hopi cosmology that describes nine inhabited worlds, each undergoing cycles of corruption, destruction, and rebirth. Some interpret the prophecy as metaphorical, representing spiritual or societal transformations rather than literal celestial events. Supporters of the prophecy point to similarities with other indigenous and religious end-time narratives as evidence of its validity. While skeptics view it as mythology, believers argue that the prophecy contains deep spiritual truths that transcend literal interpretations. Hospitals send people to hell refers to a fringe belief that certain medical procedures or practices in hospitals can inadvertently condemn patients to eternal damnation. Proponents of this idea claim that some medical interventions, particularly those involving the brain or heart, can interfere with the soul's natural departure from the body at the time of death. This theory often focuses on resuscitation techniques, 
suggesting that bringing someone back from clinical death might trap their soul in a limbo-like state or redirect it to hell. Some adherents point to near-death experiences involving hellish visions as potential evidence for this concept. The use of certain drugs or anesthetics is sometimes cited as a means by which hospitals might unknowingly alter a person's spiritual state at the moment of passing. Believers in this theory often interpret religious texts or spiritual teachings in ways that support the idea of medical interference with the afterlife journey. While lacking scientific support, this belief taps into existential fears about death, the afterlife, and the limits of human intervention in natural processes. Advocates of this theory sometimes argue that traditional or alternative healing methods are spiritually safer alternatives to modern hospital procedures. Hostile plants refers to the theory that certain plant species possess intelligence and actively harbor malevolent intentions towards humans and animals. Proponents of this idea suggest that some plants have evolved complex defense mechanisms that go beyond passive protection, actively seeking to harm potential threats. Evidence cited for this theory includes the existence of highly toxic plants, rapid-moving species like the Venus flytrap, and plants that emit chemical signals to attract predators of their herbivore attackers. Some believers point to instances of unusually aggressive plant growth, such as trees damaging buildings or vines overwhelming structures, as signs of intentional hostility. The concept of hostile plants often incorporates the idea of plant consciousness, suggesting that some flora may have a level of awareness that allows for strategic and antagonistic behavior. Advocates of this theory sometimes reference folklore and mythology from various cultures that depict malevolent plant entities or spirits. While mainstream botany does not support the idea of plant hostility in a conscious sense, research into plant communication and defense mechanisms continues to reveal complex interspecies interactions. Supporters of the hostile plants theory argue that human understanding of plant intelligence is limited and that further study may reveal previously unrecognized forms of plant aggression or intent. Forms of plant aggression or intent. Human biocapital refers to the theory that human biological data and genetic information are being treated as valuable commodities by governments and corporations. This concept suggests that DNA samples, health records, and other biological information are being collected, stored, and potentially traded for various purposes. Proponents of this theory point to the increasing prevalence of genetic testing services, biobanks, and large-scale health data collection initiatives as evidence of a growing biocapital market. Some argue that this information is being used to develop targeted medical treatments, create personalized products, or even influence social and economic policies. The rise of precision medicine and biotechnology advancements are often cited as driving forces behind the increasing value of human biological data. Concerns about privacy, consent, and potential misuse of this information fuel discussions about the ethical implications of treating human biology as a form of capital. Supporters of this theory sometimes link it to broader ideas about surveillance capitalism and the commodification of personal data in the digital age. The Human Genome Project refers to a groundbreaking scientific initiative aimed at mapping and understanding all human genes. Launched in 1990, this ambitious project was expected to take 15 years and cost around $3 billion to complete. The project achieved significant success, providing unprecedented data about human genetics and developing revolutionary technologies in genomics. Despite its achievements, the Human Genome Project was abruptly defunded in 2003, shortly after announcing the completion of initial sequencing. This sudden defunding shocked the scientific community and led to various theories about the reasons behind this decision. Some speculate that political shifts following the events of September 11, 2001 may have redirected funding priorities towards defense and security. Others suggest that increasing commercial interest in genomics may have led the government to consider its role in funding such research less essential. The defunding decision had far-reaching implications, leading to a diversification of genomics research into numerous smaller specialized projects. 